In this video, we're going to solve example 1.3. This is an example in which you are given the speed of a baseball, and you're given the distance that the baseball travels, and then you're asked to find the time that it takes the baseball to travel that distance. It happens to be the distance between uh, the pitcher's hand and home plate. So this problem is all about what happens after the ball is released by the pitcher's hand uh, and it travels to home plate. So we're not talking about what happens when the ball is in the pitcher's hand or when it's getting hit by a bat or anything like that. It's just about what happens while it's on the way from the pitcher's hand to home plate. The problem reads this way. Determine how long it takes a baseball to reach home plate if the ball is thrown at 130 kilometers per hour by the pitcher and the distance from the pitcher's release point to the plate is 18 meters. You may assume that the ball velocity remains constant on the way to the plate. That is to say, we're going to assume that air doesn't slow it down. There's no drag forces acting on the ball while it's on the way to home plate. The way we're going to solve this problem is we are going to use the relationship that we have between velocity and, and distance and time. And so we have a formula for average speed. And that's going to be given by the distance traveled divided by the time taken to travel that distance. In this problem, we are not solving for the average velocity. We're given the average velocity. We're supposed to find the time. We're supposed to find delta t, the time taken to travel this distance, delta x. So we do a little bit of algebra here. We do a little bit of algebra, and we rearrange this equation so that we have uh, delta t is equal to delta x divided by the average speed. So what we need to do is we need to calculate what the uh, time is that it takes to travel delta x given the average uh, speed. And we're going to do that um, using the information that is given to us. So one thing that we're given right away is we know that the distance that the ball travels, delta x, you're told that that is equal to 18 meters. You're also told that the ball's velocity is equal to the average velocity. Uh, that's the only velocity that the ball ever has in this problem. So that velocity is equal to 130 kilometers per hour. If we were to go and plug in 18 meters into this equation, along with our 130 kilometers per hour, uh, we're not going to get the right answer. We need to do a conversion first so that we have meters on the top and meters per second on the bottom. Or we have to have some agreement between these units. Right now we have two different units for distance. We have kilometers and meters. And uh, we're going to want to measure the time that it takes for the ball to get to the plate in seconds. So we're going to want to express this velocity in units of meters per second. So that's going to require a unit conversion. So if we write out the uh, speed of the ball, 130 kilometers per hour, what we're going to do to convert this to meters per second is we are going to multiply by 1. So you never change a quantity by multiplying by 1. We're going to use different forms of 1 with different units in order to get the units that we want using this uh, unit factor technique. One factor that I could multiply by would be 1 hour being equivalent to 60 minutes. So this isn't going to get us to seconds. If you knew how many seconds were in an hour, you could do this in one step. But let's assume that we don't. Let's assume that we just remember that there are uh, 60 minutes in an hour. And then let's uh, multiply by another conversion factor that's going to convert between minutes and seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds. And then finally, we still have to get rid of this kilometers over here. So we're going to multiply by the number of meters in a kilometer. So that's going to be 1,000 meters in one kilometer. So every one of these fractions that we're multiplying by is just a form of 1. We're not changing the quantity, we're just changing the units. When I go to multiply, I'm going to be able to cancel a number of things. I cancel hours with hours. I can cancel kilometers with kilometers. I can cancel minutes with minutes. Uh, and what I'm left with is meters per second. And so I punch all these numbers into my calculator, and what I get in the end is that the average speed is equal to 36.1 when I round off meters per second. Now we are ready to go back to our formula that we derived for the time taken. So I have uh, delta t is equal to the distance traveled by the ball, which is 18 meters, 
divided by the velocity which is in meters per second thirty six point one and since i'm dividing meters by meters per second my answer is going to come out in seconds so it's going to come out just a hair under a half a second but i'll round off to the nearest hundredth of a second and i get zero point five zero seconds and that is how we solve example one point three